Muhammad Light, it's good to talk to you again, man. It felt like it was impossible to get an interview with you for a lot of my career here on the desk, but now it's back-to-back -back monthly final champions. Uh, Lucas is going to hate me for this, Mo, but you finally got the back-to-back -back <laughs> monthly championship belt. How does that make you feel? Well, I'm really happy right now. Like, I was thinking about this Lucas thing. Uh, I really wanted to get it so I can hop on him and stuff to have fun with him. But yeah, it uh, looks like we're gonna have a lot of interviews uh, in the future. It's not a very good thing, but yeah, here, here I am. <laughs> hey, you know what, man? I'm, I'm happy to interview you as many times as you keep winning. You know, you came back this month and it's another playing through that lower bracket. You, you obviously were sent down there a little bit later on today. Was there any moment throughout that lower bracket run or when Pandora beat you where you were like, all right, maybe this month, maybe this month I'll take second place. Or have you just found that that lower bracket doesn't really mean anything different for you? Well, this time around, since I was in the lower bracket for like only one match, uh, definitely the stress wasn't as high as before since uh, me losing in the first round in previous tournaments. I had like that stress all the time. So I only had it once this time. So I was able to like manage that well. And no, I uh, most of the time I was confident in myself that I can bounce back in that final. It's uh, it's my specialty, I guess, winning back-to-back -back sets in the final. So, yeah, I was confident all the time. So talking about your confidence, that's one of the things that Guanic actually, <laughs> there's a thread right now that Surge TS put up about what separates you from everyone else, and confidence is a big part of it. I got to ask, talking about confidence, that matchup against Pandora, you're playing E-Giant, you are getting worked the entire game, and you decide to go naked E-Giant at the bridge, opposite lane, when, when did that idea come into your mind? When did you recognize that it could work? Or was it more of a desperation play? Talk talk me through that process a little bit and maybe even what was going on in your ear if there was anything from your coaching staff. Um, yeah, that e giant matchup, uh, it's not as easy as it looks for Elixir Giant, especially in single Elixir when you don't have a great cycle. You can uh, uh, take a lot of damage, but in double Elixir, you can definitely maneuver more with like E Giants at the bridge. In that matchup, you don't E Giant in the back because they just Prince Mega Knight into it, and it's uh, it's almost impossible to break through that. So, him cycling his archers in the opposite lane, I felt like playing an E Giant into that lane and playing a Lightning on the Prince, try to DPS it down. Maybe I would have gotten at least some damage, and then maybe like do a defense, repeat the same process, and get the win somehow. I had to like uh, go for a desperation play as well. Yeah, I mean, that that's a, I love you breaking that down for me. That thought process that you're making in a split second is always so impressive. Um, you know, Mo, you, you seem to just keep winning. You are going to World Finals once again. Uh, talk to me just a little bit about your coaching with Jebez. I know that you guys are very vocal about working together. Obviously, you had some great changes today. You had that, you know, the Inferno coming in with one of your Hoggy Q decks. Uh, you know, feel free to talk about Jebez and talk a little bit about Hoggy Q and why you guys seem to be leaning towards it so much right now. Well, first of all, Hoggy Q is one of my strongest archetypes, along with the Miner, for example. So we definitely like to, uh, I guess, abuse playing it since I'm very good at it, and I guess I can bail out some matchups if I get a bad matchup. Uh, and adding the Inferno Tower there, I guess Jibus was afraid from beatdown decks, especially Monk decks, because having Bomb Tower, for example, or Cannon with the Archer Queen, the Monk gets a lot of value on the Queen and the Cannon, yeah. but Inferno, Inferno doesn't get reflected, for example. So, yeah, Jibu is, uh, he works with Alan. Alan is like a secondary coach. He helps him with picking cards, uh, missing cards and stuff. They're a really, really good uh, partnership. Uh, I love them. <laughs> they do really well every time. All right, well, Mohamed Light, great to hear that your team is setting you up to win and great to see you coming through again. Congrats on another golden ticket in quotes, but more so about securing another 16K. Uh, I'm sure we'll see you again next month, my man. Have a great rest of your day. Enjoy another big win.